Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Uh, I am on the way to produce value for people, and uh, a lot of people say they were on their way to work, but I don't like to think of it that way. I like to think of it as production, being a producer. Anyway, that's where I'm headed. Uh, it's going to be six o'clock in the morning here in about half an hour, and uh, I still have my early morning cough and throat clearing, it's, you know, the old man stuff, uh, so please forgive that. I am thinking about a particular uh, thing, uh, and I, I'm going to kind of just have this podcast be a string of consciousness, is it what they call it, or just, I'm going to be thinking out loud, and uh, there's no big solution that I have here. My reason for making a podcast out of it uh, is because I, I maybe you also think some of these same things. Maybe you have some of these same questions. Uh, maybe some of the questions that I ask or the answers I have, you're going to think are completely wrong. Um, maybe some of them will help you. Some of them will help you by uh, being similar to yours, some by being opposite. Anyway, long intro. Let's get going. Let's talk about how much of the bad stuff that's happening is part of some big conspiracy and how much of it is just uh, kind of stuff falls into place. And I am constantly struggling with this. In the voluntarist uh, community, uh, with the fellow travelers who have read many of the same books, think along the same lines, uh, we have the same uh, content producers who provide lectures, uh, in video, audio, again, books, we, we hear many of the same things. And then there's within our, if we're thinking of a Venn diagram, within our circle of voluntarism, which is philosophy, a very simple philosophy, there's a, a big overarching uh, circle there that covers much of voluntarism, which is the free market economics uh, the school called the Austrian School of Economics. That's a big circle that overlaps. Another circle that is smaller, but there's some overlap, is the conspiracy theory circle. And that's what I'm chatting about today. I have friends with whom I agree about many things philosophic, and yet they come up with some pretty out there, in my opinion, theories about how the, the bad guys, the government, how they're conspiring to do things. And not just governments, but the people who run the governments, the, whatever level is on top of uh, government. And I don't know. Uh, I, I believe that, that there are people, groups, people who work with each other, I guess that could loosely be called a group, that they get together and they talk about things and they want certain things to happen. Some of those things I think are good. Some of them I think are bad. But I completely believe that they do get together and talk about how to make their vision of a better world happen. And I think I would be naive not to recognize that I'm not the only person who gets together with buddies and says, hey, I wish we could make the world a better place. Nope, I think lots of people do that. Some of them are wealthy, some of them have a lot of power, and yeah, most certainly they're getting together and having these conversations. And most certainly they're starting up not-for-profits together, uh, non-profits, and trying to make what their vision of good things, uh, they're trying to make that happen in the world. And, uh, you know, as far as the, you know, good effort there, dudes, but a lot of the things you're thinking are wrong and are actually harmful, and that's what, that's what bugs me. I also have to be brought back to reality. I have to be brought back to the ground. And somebody who helps me do this is Christian from uh, the, the podcast, Liberty After Dark. Christian, when I'll run an idea by him, He'll kind of come back with the reminder that perhaps what I am saying is a bit fantastical and there isn't good empirical evidence. And is it Oxum's razor, uh, the, the, the concept that 
usually, not always, but usually the simplest explanation of something is the accurate one. So if you, if you have some phenomenon happening in the world and there's this huge elaborate uh, idea of what maybe is, is happening and then there's a real simple one, yeah, it's probably the simple one that's correct. And so Christian helps bring me back to the ground and encourages me to question my own standards for believing in things. And so that is something I have to frequently rem- remind myself. If I am in the, the social science circles, well, it's science, the scientific method, is having good evidence, good proof for the things in which you believe. And if you don't have good reason to believe in something, then you don't believe it. Now, I would argue that there is a distinction between believing something and being suspicious of something. I think that there, I think it's perfectly acceptable to see some things happening, not have great evidence, but just look at it and go, you know, the totality of the circumstances, there's this little piece of not great evidence and that little piece of decent evidence, but yeah, you put together 50 of those, and you kind of go, you know, I suspect that something could be going on here. Now, that's not enough to, of course, make a claim that that thing is happening. It's just enough to say, I don't trust that it's not happening. And that's the position I hold on many of the popular conspiracies listen to the arguments, and usually they're pretty poor. I recently heard one from a a good guy. Like, I like this dude in a lot of ways. We're friends. Uh, We agree very much about voluntarism. He's done so much to forward voluntarism, and yet he has a, a huge part of him that just loves or enjoys finding conspiracies and talking about them as though they're fact. And I disagree in this case. Uh, In this case, it's uh, the anarcho-capitalist, voluntarist, fringe, crazy festival that was, is, or was held in Mexico. I I won't be going back, but I went uh, 2016, 2017, 2019, 2020, uh, yeah, I think that was the last, it was the year that they were starting the whole COVID scare. Uh, that was my last year going. But this is Anarchapoco that I'm talking about. And this, this friend's theory is that it's a CIA front and that a bunch of the people involved in the festival, and by the way, nobody else calls it a festival, but, but I do. I've, I've had this problem for years that it's not an anarcho-capitalist convention. It's not just about philosophy or economics, which is what anarcho-capitalism is. Um, There are a lot of fringe things going on that have nothing to do with it. But I think a good 10 or 20 percent of the people who attended were principled anarcho-capitalist voluntarists. And that's the you know biggest concentration I've been able to find. So I loved going for that 10 or 20% of the people uh, who were there. So his theory is that the CIA wants to discredit anarcho-capitalism, voluntarism, because it's true and good and it's, it could bring down governments. Their job is to keep governments strong. And so, clearly, it's their job to be looking for anything that could harm their interests, the interests of government, and uh, then use the tactics that they have used and developed over many years to bring down this opposition. And do I think that the CIA and other United States government groups and governments from all over the world have, throughout centuries, maybe especially the last century, have they used propaganda, uh, mind control, psyops? Has all this stuff happened? Well, yeah, of course. There are 
branches of the government that are, you know, named after that are like, that's, that's what they do. And so I completely believe that that stuff happens. And I completely believe that 99% of the people who are victims of this, uh, these operations, don't realize that they're victims of the operation and they just think it all happened. So I, I get that. However, in order for me to believe that, that a, an operation is taking place, a lot of good evidence has to be provided. And I haven't seen any great evidence. I've seen a, a tiny bit of, yeah, yeah, that is suspicious. But things like uh, murders have been faked or deaths have been faked. Um, I, I'm not, not buying that. Um, I, would, I would need evidence. Like, I would need good evidence, and there isn't any. The, the things that are offered as evidence are not, in fact, evidence. They're just, oh, I don't know, anecdotal comments. Um, th- there wasn't the appropriate amount of blood pooling under the dead body in a photograph that, or a video that somebody saw. And, and to think that every mammal who suffers a fatal blunt trauma injury or a bullet wound is going to bleed exactly the same or that it will pool the same, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, that's just, that's not evidence. That's just speculation. That's throwing stuff out there and maybe it sticks. Um, and, and that just isn't my level. That's not my, I have a different level that I require the evidence that I believe to reach. And none of this reaches that level. Going back some steps, let me, just as we, as I tackle this one conspiracy theory, many conspiracy theories are true, but I'm tackling this particular one. Was Anarchapoco, at least the last three or four or five years of it, whatever, was that a CIA heavily infiltrated operation to make anarcho-capitalists look like idiots. I don't think so. I, I think that the people who could describe the shortcomings, like, like if, you, if we took a sampling at this, this convention, this festival, you, you take 100 people, randomly select them, and you ask them about the nuances between the Chicago School and the Austrian School of Economics. What, what was the big thing that, let's say, Milton Friedman got wrong? What was the monumental thing that he believed was acceptable that the Austrian school does not believe is acceptable? Out of those hundred people, I'm guessing maybe 10% or 20% would know the correct answer to that. And then out of that same group of 100, if you ask a couple other questions, who are your five favorite authors um, in terms of anarcho-capitalism, voluntarism, free market economics? You can even make it that broad. I don't think that more than 10 or 20 percent of those people could list five authors and five book titles, um, even allowing for some hacking of you know, getting things slightly wrong. Um, I don't think that more than 10 or 20% could have done that. So now let's look at the other 80% or 90% of the people there. Many of those people are there because, hey, we heard this something about anarchy. We heard that there are drugs in Mexico. We heard that people are accepted and loved and brought into this community and the world has cast us out. We were kicked out by our parents for being little knuckleheads and We never really got any education, and we've made a bunch of lousy life choices, or we've made life choices that have put us in a position that most people think is lousy. We're poor. We haven't developed a good retirement nest egg for ourselves, and we're not even thinking about it, and we're already 30 or 40 years old, and we just don't really have our lives together, but here's a place where we can go and be accepted and just kind of hang out and the rainbow people aren't having their convention this week, and neither is, I don't know, some other fringe group. So, yeah, let's go check this one out. So I think a large percentage of the people that were at this event 
fall into that category. And they're not bad people. They're just at a different place in life than the other 10 or 20 percent of the, the more principled, intentional people who were there. And so I think that just looking at the demographics of the crowd, there's lots of room for idiot stuff to happen, for for bad choices to be made, for uh, silly silly stuff to happen, and, and sad stuff, and and the consequences of not brushing your teeth for a lot of years are that you will probably have gum disease, and consequences of not being financially responsible are blah, 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 and the consequences of using a substance, whether or not it's a good or bad substance, that the controlling group, uh, the government or the mafia or whoever, whatever group runs the area you're in, the cartel, if you use something that they really hate, then chances are you're going to have some bumps in your life. They're going to make it difficult for your life. So these are all just kind of natural consequences, things that happen that don't have anything to do with a conspiracy. So the fact or the, the, the allegation that the CIA came in and tried to make Anarchapoco look like anarcho-capitalists or a bunch of idiots, I think idiots did that. I don't think the CIA did it. I haven't had seen any good proof that they did. Um, I was, I got to admit, I had my, my little uh, antenna raised a little bit. I, I saw in the front row for a year or two, some smiling, charismatic, nice person who had a mohawk and a, like, I think a sleeveless t-shirt. His mohawk was dyed wild, crazy colors. It was pretty much what, when you look at what the, the press, what most people think of when they think of anarchy, you know, they don't even think of the philosophy part. They just think of the wild, crazy cars burning in the street and who's burning them? people with tattoos who have multicolored mohawks. So I saw that person and I'm like, that's just, that's too rich. Like you can't, that has to be somebody who is either making a joke or doesn't understand the implications of what their silliness. I even thought, could that be somebody who hates anarchists who decided to come dress that way, get in the front row so that all the camera shots of the stage would include this colorful mohawk and the tattoos on the sleeveless arm. Uh, I, I, I had to think, this is, like, you couldn't do much better to discredit, subtly, um, a movement um, and to fight back against the, the rational people who are saying, no, anarchy means without rulers. It's a philosophy that Maybe we could all get along without bringing force between us and having masters rule over uh, our neighbors. And Like, there's this whole beautiful philosophy. Whether or not it would work pragmatically, which I think it would, but even if you don't think it would, it's a, it's a beautiful philosophy. Even if it's just a bunch of geeky brainiacs coming up with a, this cool sci-fi way of that society might organize itself, it's a, it's a cool premise. And... Tattoos and mohawks and drugs don't, like, it has nothing to do with the philosophy. So, that did make me suspicious. But not enough to think that that would be a, a government operation. And, and then I look, at, I look at what would rise to the level. If I was on, I was a supervisor in the, the CIA division that is the go out and find threats division. And I'm looking at Taliban. I'm looking at a, a government somewhere in the world that's a, a tiny little government, but they're not in debt. And the, so they can't be controlled uh, by, you know, central banks don't have them by the short hairs. And so, so the powers that be can't control them. So yeah, we need to go in and get them to take out loans. And the confessions of an economic hitman. That's kind of where that line of thinking comes from. So that that's one you know type of opposition that I might be looking for as a supervisor of this CIA group. I would also be looking for people who are looking to violently overthrow the government, and that might be uh, 
anarcho-capitalists, some of them. Um, I think all that I have met have been advocates of overthrowing the government, not by overthrowing it, but by being peaceful, wonderful people and setting an example of how government isn't necessary and, and maybe setting up systems by which we can all trade with each other and, and communicate with each other that the government can't control or surveil. Uh, but there's not a, there's not like, hey, let's all get together and, and practice with our AR-16s and get really good with them so that we can go and overthrow the government by force. Like there's, there's not that thinking that I've heard in the community. So who then, who, who then, who else? Maybe the people who are having success in a, a counter movement that could change the minds of people. And if I was the CIA supervisor, I would say, well, there's pork fest. There's, you know, where, where could I go to get a feeling where I could blend in and kind of get a feeling for what these, these people, this community is doing. So pork fest would be one. Anarchapoco would be another, um, Freedom Fest in Vegas, that's just like kind of sort of freedom in a couple areas, freedom light. Like that's more of a Republicans with slight libertarian leanings kind of event. So that wouldn't be a one worth going to, even though it does gain, you know, have some traction, like some big names go to it. But that kind of would be enough to show me that it's not a threat. Um, so then then I would have to deeply analyze, okay, Anarchapoco, I'm if I'm going to look at this one particular event, is there a sizable group of competent people there that could could be an issue? And so, yeah, I might I might say, hey, a couple of you agents, run down there and enjoy the week. Don't get too drunk. Have fun. See what see what intel you can gather, and you know, pretend to be part of the group. And yeah, I can see them sending a couple of people down and walking away a week later saying, wow, there's some really cool, deep-thinking, high-IQ brainiacs who have no idea about social cues or how to get along well with people. But these people are writing code and inventing processes and, like, what a nifty, eccentric, small segment of the whole group that those people are. But they are really neat. And then there are the, the uh, people who... I don't know, the crypto group, and then they're the hippie group, and the druggy group, and the the swinging naked group, and the this and the that, and the kind of the burning man part, and the economics people, and then the true philosophy people. And overall, after looking at Anarchapoco, uh, my wife and I are employers and are always looking for good people. We recruited one person from Anarchapoco after attending for, was it four or five years and seeing many, many hundreds of people who we really like, we recruited one person that we thought had what it took to be successful in the professional world um, in our business. And so I think that if I was a CIA supervisor kind of dude, I, and I'm listening to these agents say, yeah, they're, they're quite the group, but... I don't think you have anything to worry about them rising up and, and doing something. Like, these people can't get it together enough to, I don't know, to fix their own car. Like, they're hitching rides with each other, and, like, they're not solvent, well-organized, self-disciplined people, uh, by and large. Like, it's, it's not a group that we need to be concerned about. Well, but maybe they're spreading the word, and it's going like wildflower fire, or wildflower, either way. Well, no, it's not. Um, Anarcho-capitalism has grown a ton since I've been in it, uh, since the late 2000s, 2008-ish, 7 to 8-ish is when I really got into it. And yeah, it's, it's grown a ton, but principled anarcho-capitalist voluntarists today, what's the, what's the head count? Who could pass my simple test of uh, what's the difference between, you know, what's the big problem with the Chicago School or Milton Friedman and, uh, and the difference between the Austrian economics? The people who could pass that test and then the five books, five authors, 
I grown substantially, but what are there, five, ten thousand of us? And, and I'm not saying that it takes everybody in a movement knowing everything to matter. It definitely doesn't. It's not like a, you look at how powerful the, the Democrat Party is in the United States in the 2020s, early. Um, it's not like most of them could even name five Democrat presidents who have existed or like simple, simple tasks that you would think government schools could teach in 12 years. Like, no, I don't expect the, the masses to be completely intelligent on something. But you would think, you would think that if it's an, uh, a philosophy movement, which is what anarcho-capitalism is, you would think that, that there would be more people who would know stuff. And so since there aren't, since there are a few, five, ten thousand principled, educated, anarcho-capitalists, voluntarist libertarians out there, no, that isn't something that I think I would put our resources toward discrediting to the tune of having a movie made about it or documentary and uh, having, you know, the, the Mohawk tattooed person sit in the front row to, to make everybody look silly. Um, having, you know, bringing drugs in to show. No, there are a lot of alternative weird people. Some of them are actually the principled ones, but then there are a lot that are not. And yeah, there are going to be people peddling drugs back and forth. And I did some of it. I, I did it with the drug uh, uh, alcohol. Like I was buying beers for the table and other people were doing it. So did me having too much to drink? I don't think I ever got too foolish or anybody noticed I was drunk, but you know, if I did get drunk and do something silly, um, I can assure you that I sure wasn't funded by the CIA. I wish they, and now I guess I don't wish they would have, because that would have been stolen money and I don't want it. But um, yeah, I, I just don't think that the, the complicated conspiracy theory is what happened. And no, I read uh, one article that listed I think there was a four-part series that my friend wrote about that particular thing. I didn't read every single word of every single article. I read one of them completely that had 10, like 10 proofs that whatever, but they weren't proofs. They were, they were just like things that maybe a few of them would raise suspicions, but none of them were things that were like, oh, wow, that's solid, well-substantiated evidence of such and such. No, it was just, I think one of them was uh, the widow. I don't know if they were married for real in their hearts, but I think they were. So the widow of one guy who most people agree was a jerk, who raised a lot of, you know, angst among people and was mean to a lot of people and uh, was a drug dealer and all this. When, when he got taken out, when he was killed, one of the allegations is that his widow didn't cry enough or her tears weren't real. Uh, there, there were, there was a series of photographs of her that sh didn't show real tears. And the proof was, well, if your husband had been killed, you'd be crying and showing real tears. And that is not only not true, but that's rude. Um, my wife and I lost our daughter to cancer a few years ago. And that was a very sad and real thing. And you can take pictures of me talking about it as I am right now. And I've talked about it a lot over the years. And right now I am not crying, but that doesn't take away my sadness about the death of my loved one. And I don't think that's really a, a cool thing to do. That was, that was a naughty move. That was a rude move. That should probably be apologized for. Um, yeah, in this whole, yeah, but the documentary, um, the documentary was absolutely the, the end result of the, the HBO documentary, The Anarchists. The end result was absolutely to discredit anarcho-capitalism and voluntarism. Like if it had been a CIA sponsored thing, it would have been a very successful one. It really hurt the movement. Um, in my opinion, it brought awareness, 
but by bringing awareness to the masses, it also turned people off to the movement completely. So I, I completely believe that it was a, a horrible thing to have had happen. However, the, the producers of it and the people who wanted it to happen, um, I, I don't hold any animosity. It's uh, we all got to do what we got to do to make a buck. And uh, they didn't initiate violence against anyone. They videotaped people being idiots. And when people are idiots, um, yeah, those people are the problem. Not the, not the people who take pictures or record videos of the idiots. It's the idiots that are the problem. Um, so yeah, no animosity there. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I, just, I, I don't think it was a CIA sponsored, funded, organized kind of thing. So that was kind of my dive into one example of a conspiracy that has been brought up. So what kind of evidence would I need for something? Well, that's where things get iffy for me. Um, if I could select four associates to help me uh, discredit a movement, and I don't know what kind of movement it would be, but let's say there was a legitimate, uh, well thought out thing that I don't agree with, but it was a serious, well thought out thing. And, and I was hired to be the person to be the psyops guy to go in and discredit that movement. And I get four people to help me. We would be smart enough in what we did. I would lead my team in such a way that people would not know what we were doing. There would be a lot of uh, gaslighting and propaganda and introducing this person to that person because you know that together they're going to cause stuff to happen that will result in what it is that I want to have happen. And yeah, I, I would not leave a lot of evidence. By the way, nobody's hired me to do this. Um, so I, I haven't thought it all through, but I have thought through how to spread a particular message, the message of free markets, voluntarism, peace, uh, that kind of thing. And I have done some of those things. I have conspired, um, and even if it's not conspiring with others, I have thought out, huh, this person is a musician, this person is a musician, they're both liberty-leaning, kind of almost anarchists, how can I help them both, or at least one of them, the one who is more of the alpha leader, how can I help them become more knowledgeable in the philosophy, and introduce the two of them together, and then, oh, well, you look at that, they ended up coming out with a song or a podcast or a documentary. So I have made some stuff happen, quote unquote, um, from behind the scenes that even the people themselves don't realize that there were sinister plans behind this. Um, hey, I think this guy might like this gal and they could have a good life together. And then, oh, they accidentally happened to meet at my party. Um, and they both just thought they were randomly invited. Uh, yeah, I, I get that these things happen. And when people do these things, they don't always leave a bit of evidence. So my group of four and I, uh, we would not be leaving lots of good evidence that might satisfy a highly critical, high standards of evidence kind of guy like me. I'm using myself as an example as a good guy and the bad guy here, so that's probably not smart, but I think you get what I'm saying. I think I'm communicating it well enough. Um, so, so, yeah, I don't know. I, are other people conspiring and coming up with these ideas and plans and doing things? Yeah, certainly. Uh, are these things happening in the world? Yeah. Do I catch every single one of them? No. Am I asking myself a bunch of easy questions so I can answer? Hey, whatever. Um I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? What are some of your brain droppings after hearing my brain droppings, my scattered thinking here? What what standard of evidence, in order to be a, a rational person, if I'm dealing in the psyops world, what 
level of evidence should I require to take a theory or an assertion seriously and to say, okay, there's something there. I don't know what the correct answer is. What do you think?